Hello everyone. In this video lecture, I am going to talk about Anderson's uh, theory of faulting. Anderson gave the classification of fault based on uh, the orientation of maximum, minimum, and intermediate principal stress axis, and uh, it is varied uh, even at present. Uh, but before going to understand the Anderson's uh, uh, Anderson's theory and the uh, Anderson's uh, Anderson's classification of fault, we have to understand some of the rules. Rule number one: fault plane must pass through the principal axis of intermediate stress. Rule number two: fault plane must exhibit angle of 30 degree with respect to principal axis of maximum stress. Rule number three, displacement should be perpendicular to the principal axis of intermediate stress. As we all know, the maximum, intermediate and minimum, uh, uh, minimum principal stress axis are mutually perpendicular to each other. And uh, I am representing the uh, in this case I am representing the uh, max principal axis of uh, maximum stress with a red color that is sigma one intermediate principal stress axis with green color that is sigma two and principal stress axis uh, the minimum principal stress axis with uh, blue color sigma three okay. So these are mutually, as you can see, these are mutually uh, perpendicular to each other. Now in this, in the first case, I am taking the maximum principal stress axis vertical, that is vertical to the ground surface. Okay. So this is the maximum principal stress axis that is sigma one, the red one. Okay. It is vertical. And the remaining two, the minimum principal stress axis, this blue one, and the intermediate principal stress axis, this green one, are hence horizontally lying and mutually 90, uh, uh, 90 degree to each other, perpendicular to each other. Now, first of all, we have to draw the uh, fault plane using these principal ru uh, these uh, rules. Okay. The first rule, the plane, the fault plane must pass through the principal axis of intermediate stress. So this is, this green one is sigma 2. It is the intermediate principal stress axis. And this plane is passing through it. The second rule is, fault plane must exhibit angle of 30 degree with respect to uh, maximum principal stress axis. And it is making an angle of 30 degree, okay, uh, as this is uh, 30 degrees an acute angle and you can see here that it is making uh, 30 degree. This plane is making angle 30 degree with respect to this sigma one, this red one, okay. So this is one of the possible orientation of, uh, of a fault plane and if you if you want to understand the direction of uh, the how the vectors should be oriented uh, in this fault plane then it should be perpendicular to the sigma 2 uh, and it should lie within this plane so it would be like this uh, as i am moving the cursor it should be perpendicular to this okay but there is one more possible plane uh, in this condition okay one is oriented in this way and second is oriented in this way okay this is also making angle of 30 degree with respect to maximum principal stress axis it is containing the intermediate principal stress axis so there are there are possible two planes two fault plane for this condition that is uh, when we have maximum principal stress axis vertical 
and in this condition when the fault plane are oriented like this we encounter normal fault okay so this is the same condition this is sigma 1 sigma 3 and sigma 2 horizontal sigma 1 is vertical and these are the two planes two fault plane uh, two possible fault plane and they are making 30 degree angle with respect to sigma 1 okay and here we can see it is forming the normal fault so the normal fault and the gravity fault a result of uh, a result when the maximum principal stress axis is vertical now take second case in which we have the minimum principal stress axis is vertical okay so we have the minimum principal stress axis that is sigma 3 which is vertical so the remaining two axis sigma 1 and sigma 2 is now horizontal and as per the rules the fault plane must pass through the principal axis of intermediate stress axis so this is the fault plane which is passing through the intermediate principal stress axis okay and it is also making angle of 30 degree with respect to uh, the sigma 1 or the maximum principal stress axis and the direction of movement or the uh, the sense of movement is either from this point uh, th uh, in this way or in this way that is perpendicular to sigma axis sigma 2 okay uh, and even for this case we have two possible planes one is like this and another way and another plane is like this okay so these are two possible planes and in this condition in which the minimum principal stress axis is vertical so uh, this is the fault plane which is making a very low angle with respect to the uh, the surface okay and its sense of motion is this so in this condition what we actually encounter is thrust fault okay as we can see here in the diagram also the sigma 3 is vertical here also the sigma 3 is vertical so uh, this causes generation of thrust fault okay it is a reverse fault so the reverse fault or thrust fault is usually being developed with uh, the max with the many uh, with the minimum principal stress axis held vertical okay so this is associated with the crystal shortening okay now let's take the third condition that is intermediate principal stress axis is vertical so in the case one we have sigma one vertical in case two we have sigma three vertical now in this case the sigma two is vertical that is the intermediate principal stress axis is now vertical and hence uh, the remaining two maximum and uh, and the minimum principal stress axis should be horizontally lying because all these principal stress axis are mutually perpendicular to each other and as per the rules our plane should be oriented in such a way that they, it should contain the intermediate principal stress axis like in this case it should make angle of 30 degree okay so this is the plane which is which I am inserting from this side it is making 30 degree angle with this uh, maximum principal stress axis and it is passing it is covering this uh, intermediate principal stress axis and uh, going through this uh, passing through this okay this is one of the possible orientation of fault plane and and the second possible uh, another possible second possible orientation of fault plane is this it is inserting from this side and coming out from that side and it is also making 30 degree angle with the maximum principal stress axis it is uh, covering the intermediate principal stress axis within itself and the sense of uh, motion will be either this or in this way as I'm moving the cursor okay so your, your fault should be the block should be moving along this fault plane either in this direction or in this direction so the, uh, the post uh, this this gives result to the strike slip fault okay here the intermediate principal stress axis is vertical 
so it should be either this or in this manner and that is strikes lift forward and in this case neither the crystal shortening uh, is happening nor the crystal extension is happening so there is no uh, neither crystal no no more crust is forming no crust is being consumed it is just a strike slip fault okay and that can be explained by the int, uh, by the orientation of intermediate principal stress axis so this is a very simple representation of anderson classification of fault or 